This conference will now be recorded. Hey everybody, I am Rico P. I will be speaking to you all tonight about Security 101. And um, just want to thank Tam and Dee, the women in Linux, for uh, providing a community and a safe space, space for us to uh, collaborate, communicate, uh, learn, and, and grow from one another. Um, so here's just a couple uh, channels. I'm going to keep it up here on this, this space and kind of go into a brief introduction of myself. And we lost our security. Screen. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Um, all I was gonna do is just go on on Giphy. You know how Tam like rolls through it. So if you're if you're gonna be here, would you want to just kind of Google image or Google what I'm kind of going over the the, the bullet points? I, I guess so. I can do that. Do you want me to? Are you wanting me to share my screen? Uh, as a visual, I can. I, I mean, I'll try it again, but... I mean, we can listen uh, and something. everybody should be taking notes anyway, so we're going to roll with you. Okay. I'm just saying that way they have visuals in case my screen cuts out. I could try to show okay. it one more time. No worries. Cool. All right, I'm gonna try sharing screen one go. more time. Let me know if you guys can see the Slack channel. We can see okay, it. It may drop out after a while. That's one of the bad. Oh, and y'all can hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so it, it may drop out after a while. I was just preemptively giving a disclaimer saying that's one of the bad things of security uh, where I'll have all my crypt files for like cryptography um and locking down apps this is a very good app while while we're on here um so if you put your firewall gps tracking there's a lot of logs on you uh, to go through so i think like all time i'm at uh one million logs um so just kind of going uh through that as far as uh security goes so if if we drop a screen share then then let me know um today i'm gonna go over probably like my five plus year journey in security from um, various industries uh including but uh may not be related to all of these uh 5732 is electronics uh finance healthcare insurance and uh, entertainment industry, uh, or sales and entertainment. Uh, so with that, I've gotten a little bit of experience and I know everybody's like, oh, hey, you're gonna make big money. You're gonna have Scrooge McDuck money when you get out of college and you get hired on and, you know, um, people are gonna hire you. Normally, uh, I'm gonna just, um, Pause for a second here. Well, that might be good for me to stop my text. Sorry about that. If y'all can see that. Um, so normally, um, people are either trying to move laterally into tech or um, come straight out of college. So there's. Um, the gap, that five-year gap that, that you have to um, to get, and I'll just go here. So let's see here. So um, I'll say security. We lost your screen again. Mm, all right. I'm just Googling security IT jobs. Okay. All right, so with that, um, a lot of them from uh, any of the, the hiring or recruiting companies, they basically say, oh, you got to have a CISSP, you got to have so many certs, you got to have five years experience. Uh, everything that I hear from Tam 
all the times here and in the job posting is uh, it don't matter. The, the hiring people are gatekeepers and usually they just do that because it's a quick write up from some sort of hiring manager that goes online, copy pastes the position and gives it to somebody else. So a lot of times it's still on networking, who you know, what you know, the certificate half the time uh, from, from what I've seen, and I'm not disclaiming anybody that, that has a certificate, I'm giving you the viewpoint of someone that, that fought through and did it without that, um, is it's a gatekeeper. So if you can get past that gatekeeper, um, whether it's through someone you know, through a recruiter that still is able to present that through them, uh, then you leverage whatever opportunity that you have and you make yourself as presentable as possible to it. Um, where Tam and D communicate and they say, hey, you have to understand the fundamentals. Um, I liken all of IT into a big industrial play playground. So let me look in the chat here because I can't talk and read at the same time. There we go. And now I'm looking at the chat. So if anybody wants to just talk in the chat, if you don't feel like taking off your mic and speaking, um, say any one kind of sports thing that that, that uh, you guys like, whether it's baseball, football, hockey, MMA. I like boxing. Okay, cool. So uh, Macho Camacho, Mayweather, old school, uh, they go in there and you have to understand that a lot of boxers actually took ballet. So why do you take ballet? Oh, well, you need to have a proper foot stance. And if you see every, any boxer, they have calves, like even ice skaters, swimmers, they got muscles on top of their muscles where people don't know. So this knowledge Tam mentioned last week is like a T engineer. So you're, you're, you're going to have to be like an iceberg and get real deep on whatever your passion is. So if you're trying to move laterally like I did, I forced my way into it. I willed my way into it. I'm not smart. I take I take the gleam off the sweat from, from Tam and I attain my knowledge. So uh, with that, with YouTube University, I knew me being a parent, me being on limited time, me being already on security where I sacrifice holidays and weekends and things like that, I, I'm going to have to pick something that's flexible. Uh, with that, you have to have the dedication because some nights you want to just Netflix and chill and some nights a family situation blows up. So you have to be able to recover and make up that time and, and block that time out. And um, this is where, uh, oh, I'll get to passing by the gatekeepers. I see you. Thank you. Um, so when you put your, your passion and, 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 you know, if you want to make a, um, a vision board and put that job, put that car, put that piece of land or whatever your motivation is, is for that, make that vision board and keep that reminder on yourself. So the law of attention and the law of intention, those are true things. Um, so that's where you have to keep gaining knowledge, keep networking, keep talking to people. Don't allow the devil to get you down because he'll try to get in your head and cast doubts. Um, and that's why you have to have a community to help bring you up, make it a safe space. Honest to God, I mean, like we can, we can take a pause right here. Mental health is a real thing and the world we're in is a little twisted. I don't know if I stopped recording or people came in and out. Um, but with, with, with all that being said, if anybody has anything that they need help in, by all means, communicate, reach out. Uh, and the energy that, that you put out is usually the energy that, that you get back. So it, it usually just helps to edify, lift everybody up. And if everybody comes up, then the whole tide raises. Um, so going back to uh, the gatekeepers, that goes to what I was just saying. A lot of it is networking and experience. So um, from what I've seen and which I'll, I'll hopefully unpackage and get into later on is you don't have to be technical. You don't have to be the wizard behind the, the curtain to, to be in IT. A lot of IT is just communication. The first couple of years for me in IT, 
I wasn't really doing IT. I was what people would call a, a BA or a BSA, which is like a business systems analyst, where I can speak tech to the tech or techies to the techs, and I can speak business to the business people. Because a lot of times, if you go too deep down in your GoLang, Python, C++, Ruby, Perl, whatever uh, script, sometimes you can't talk to humans too well, and then you forget the so what from senior management when you know you have this beautiful uh, security tool that costs $2 million, but they're only making half a million or a million in, in revenue. You know what I mean? So you're going to have to be able to explain the, the business justifications of the who, what, when, where, why on, on, on some things. Um, so a lot of that is the, the human element and not necessarily just the technical element. Uh, the other thing is experience. If you don't have experience from work, uh, again, with the with the boxing theme, or I'll, I'll kick it to BJJ because I do uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Is um, you have to have that foundation and that that stance to where then when you see something um, and Google right now, y'all Google OSI model. If you know it, perfect. If you don't know it, not not you know, uh, then then just Google it. And um, with that, that is one of the I'd say. IT foundations that, that help you um, troubleshoot. And whenever you're presented a business challenge, the deeper your foundation, then the better you'll be able to react and respond. So if, there we go, thank you. If, um, I, I'll just say from the example of a, a sysadmin, one of my, my goals in life was to be a sysadmin. I don't know coding. I had to teach myself um, Bash and PowerShell and some Python. And they don't, you know, in, in school, they teach you the, the basics, which is good. So you understand your forward loops, you understand your wall closes, you understand your tries, your catch, your error logs, uh, make it verbose if, if you have to troubleshoot it. I model is when you're able to take the um, the data flow you understand where the packets go and if it's in the upper layers then you know it's an application issue if for some reason it gets blue We lost him. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay. You're back. It's like I cannot go. Yeah. And this happens. This unfortunately happens during the uh, the normal one. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Cool. Okay. So um, I was at the OSI model. Yes. Okay. So with that, basically, it goes through the seven layers and you're able to see the topology and the, and the data flow. Another um, thing that's important is the uh, CIA triad. Are you all still with me? Yes, we're here. Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, which uh, going off memory is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So if I have a pizza delivery app, I wanna make sure that, uh, you know, Sally Struthers that's, that's ordering the pizza, that her credit card information and everything stays intact and I'm able to verify that it was her. And that um, with the integrity, there's no man in the middle attack, nobody um, interferes or changes that, that information. And availability is, making sure that you have redundancy, that the systems are up, there's no DOS attacks or no interference or interruptions coming anywhere. Um, a lot of the old school um, DDoS attacks decades ago um, through Anonymous and, and, and several other actors, they cost million dollars, you know, buku money per second for a lot of these companies. So not only from a security point of view, but when you mix that with infrastructure, you want to make sure that you have a resilient, secure, and backed up 
um, enterprise. And that's why a lot of people are, or a lot of companies are being cloud born right now because the cloud provides that solution all in a package. Uh, throw serverless um, functions or like Kubernetes where, where you can apply um, programs or apps as needed, spin up and scale out as needed, and then scale that back down. You don't have to have these $50,000 racks and switches and blades that were your traditional uh, topology of, of, of networks. Um, so everything's related, right? It's, it's the, the butterfly effect. Let me see if I can go in the chat. People are chatting, sorry. Oh, thank you. Thank you, D, on the DDoS no attack. Um, so one, I, I'll go on a quick side note on that. One of the um, things that's beautiful is you can be a hacker now and you don't have to worry about going to jail. So there's this um, other support group called EFF, Electronic Found, uh, Frontier Foundation. So they're the ones that fight um, the government, they fight uh, law enforcement, they fight uh, laws when they are passed that violate people's rights or people's privacy. One example was, I think it was um, possibly even immigrants, some people came up over the border and the cops illegally searched their phone. So that violated uh, you know, our, our rights to privacy. And EFS stepped up for these immigrants and people that couldn't even afford a lawyer and represented them because they knew that it stood for more than them. It stood for a bigger picture and um, was able to successfully uh, be a good precedent uh, in law for uh, for privacy and, and, and people's rights. Uh, so with that being said, um, that and um, and having a whole botnet uh, was one of my uh, kind of, uh, I'll, I'll reveal a little about myself, deep dark secrets of, of wanting to be a hacker. Everybody wants to put the hood up and, and, and do some some shady biz. So in reality, there's no white hat, black hat, gray hat. White hat means you're a good hacker. You only hack, you know, uh, allowed um, systems. Gray hat is a blend somewhere in between. Uh, you may go to the Starbucks, you, you may scan online for Shodan um, and, and look for vulnerable systems. Black hat is what we traditionally think of uh, as a uh, deep dark web, Silk Road, things of that nature. Robin Hood, would, yeah, I mean, laws laws were made by people, so they're fallible, so it all depends on your, your opinion, right? Um, with that being said, you know, like some laws you can talk about history, some laws you can't. Um, I'm living in Florida, just, just for example. So um, where I was getting with that is now we have labs, so it's way easy to spin up a virtual machine or a VM as I'll call it, um, or spin up half of a virtual machine, which would be a container if they all have the same kernel. So all of the Linux distributions, um, and I think that was Desiree that, that asked about that. Um, there is a ton of them and they are beautiful. So just Google Linux distros, go to YouTube, um, check out Linux distros hear many of Tam's talks about them. Um, personally, I use Ubuntu because it's reliable. I know I'm going to get hit in the back of the head next time I see Tam and D in real life. Um, obviously, Red Hat is, is good, powerful, supported by the industry. So uh, you'll be getting good, good jobs with that. Um, for me, I know I'm on the blue team. Blue team is, is defensive. Red team is offensive. So like pen testers, this, that, and the other. A lot of the pen testers that I associate with, they use Kali. Kali has a lot of tools that um, do a lot of what we would call system administration type duties for scanning the network, mapping the environment, recon. Um, other people, if they employed it for their own personal gain, you know, such as Robinhood, right? Um, then they uh, can do the scans and the recon before an attack. I'm going to get into the uh, cyber kill chain later on, but I'm going to get a quick drink of water because I'm not used to speaking. Uh, with that pause, are there any questions, comments, concerns?
You have a question from Lori in the chat. She asked, what were the main tools you used to teach yourself and how long did it take to transition into this field? Oh, wow. I didn't even see that. You want to grab your water? No, I got the water. Oh, okay. I'm scrolling up. I see freeze, ice skating, da 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 da, da gatekeepers. All right, repeat the question one more time. I'm sorry. It is, what were the main tools you used to teach yourself and how long did it take you to transition into this field? All right. Uh, main tools, women and learning, women and learning, women and learning, uh, persistence, 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 and um, took me, I'd say, five years. So when you when you hack the gap, if you needed to do it fast, I'd say then a boot camp would be appropriate for you. I couldn't afford that even with the scholarship. Um, so I knew, you know, time is money. I ended up paying with time. So I, I, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but if I'm persistent and focused enough, and if I'm passionate enough, then let's say in jujitsu, right? If I'm a noob, I can't do a hip throw. If I am persistent enough, I have seen and trained a 90 pound girl able to throw a 300 pound man because it's all technique. So in the same thing, if you understand your, your foundation and your structure, whether that's infrastructure or controls or whatnot, you have your little garden of Eden, you keep things updated, you're not gonna have any vulnerabilities. What happens is everybody has a different point of view. So usually security is not revenue generating, so they're not worried. And the traditional way was you had the one geek in the back, put them in a closet and let them let them deal with all the servers. And through trial and error, they nickel and dime and they, they get different different um, facets of, of defense and security. Uh, so depending on what industry you're in, right? Health, finance, this, that, the other, there's some that are more regulated and some that are less regulated. Um, Tams had some people that, um, that you know, they, they have their secret clearance. They work for the government that's going to be heavily regulated. I'm more in the commercial industry. I don't want to deal with all that. That's, you know, it's, it's buku money. It's beautiful. But um, for me and my current level of experience, um, you know, you have to kind of ask, is the juice worth the squeeze? So this, I think, to, to my personal point of view, it's, it's um, about balance. And unfortunately, a lot of companies and enterprises, they're on that two-week sprint mentality, go, 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 sell, 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 sell. We'll worry about updating it later. <laughs> We're still running Windows XP. It doesn't matter. We're not going to be targeted. They're going only after, you know, the big FinCam or, or whatever, Facebook and Amazon and, and whatnot. Um, so that's that on, off, five years. I didn't get that, Evelyn. So for me, I'd say uh, on the studying, it, it, I, I got out of school, um, um, uh, you know, middle age. So I know it's struggled for me to just mentally get back in the game. Um, I didn't know how I learned. I knew how I learned way back then. But trying to put it in real world scenarios, you need to um, also have those controls or that discipline on yourself to say, hey, I know better if I study in this environment or I know I won't be able to study because my dog will be barking, my kids will be yelling. I have to peel away and go over here for a couple hours or I have to study with a group. Um, so whatever your, your best way is, um, then, then you do that. The other thing is I, I didn't have any money. So I got hooked up from friends. Um, they would, I'll put it this way. I had opportunity to do what a lot of people with pedigree and people with money and they go to these boot camps and they basically get paid to memorize um, a test. A lot of these tests are multiple choice. If you memorize above 70%, boom, you get your cert, whatever the cert is. Um, so it will get you past that gatekeeper, but know that in the real world situation, 
when you have a breach, 50% of, of companies had a breach um, that didn't declare it because private, private companies uh, don't have to declare it. Over 50,000 websites are hacked a day and the, the malware is just getting polynomial with AI out there. So it's getting worse before it's getting better. Um, so with that, I didn't want any certs because I didn't want to fake the funk. So I wanted to work on my fundies. And um, for me, it was a five-year process because I had a network. I got experience from the SOC that I was with. Um, so I, I learned trial by fire. Um, and I think whether you do it that way or kind of where I was getting at with, with the hacking and me wanting to do the, um, the, um, the botnet is by having that passion, I was able to work in labs, gain more experience, know how to reset if the password's locked out, know how to hack in and look at the shadow file, uh, uh, things, things of that nature understand the steps or at least the concepts that, that a hacker would do, understand the steps or the concepts that is required for infrastructure, understand the steps or the concepts for DevOps. Um, and then you can work in the vulnerabilities for each, each one of those. Um, back in the day, each time there's um, different ways to um, have DDoS attacks and I forget what it was and it's open source now, um, but there was a botnet that at that po point in time did a replication attack. So it was like 2017, 2018. And um, I think Akamai got known for shutting them down and it was just something as simple as blocking port 5589. And uh, the attack came in on that port and a lot of times it's to either disrupt or confuse or overload a system. So some systems, have to have a TCP, which is a three-way handshake. Like, oh, hey, Tam, this is Ed. Tam will be, or, or D will be like, hey, D, this is Ed. D will be like, hey, Ed. And then I'll be like, hey, I, I confirm that you said, hey. And as you send the packets over, it's a, it's a three-way handshake. A lot of um, applications and services like streaming are UDP, where they just throw the packets out there and hope you catch them because they're throwing them so fast. So these uh, distributed denial of service attacks used botnets that had anywhere from hundreds of thousands to millions of um, systems, you know, anything from a fish tank to a refrigerator or a security camera that's connected to the internet, were able to redirect it and um, attack companies, uh, attack people and, and disrupt their way of life because, you know, they, they were defenders. I think Krebs got attacked by one of them. Cloud botnet has hijacked 30,000 systems to mine cryptocurrencies. Yeah, it's, and it's in the news. Um, they, they open source their information. So it's, it's that constant battle of, of good versus evil, you know? Uh, so you got to figure out, am I going to use a Warhammer? Am I going to use a sword, script sword? Um, am I going to defend the castle and, and help get our posture up? So um, I'd say when you're asking yourself of um, what does it take, what do I have? I would say there's a lot of people. There was, I see her face, but I can't think of her name. Um, DEF CON. 2020 or 2021, the first time when they had the masks on, she said from Starbucks, whatever they call the, the delivery people, baristas. Um, so from barista to um, CISSP, from barista to uh, CISO, and uh, basically just said, leverage the, the tools that you got. So I know... I came from a um, family with a military background. We were able to have discipline. So in that, it's kind of like that. Houston, we have a problem. Is that that big traditional thing you think of a sock with multiple people and alarms um, or even being on a boat, everybody has their role. Or I'll, I'll say soccer team or whatnot. If you know your role and everybody's doing their uh their function. Even when you're in a storm, say if you're a sailboat racer, they're hanging off the boat sideways, everything like that. 
everybody's just maintaining their job and sailing right on through and doing their objective. So, um, if you're able to deal with a million people in line being pissed at you because they didn't get their Starbucks order on time, then you can kind of translate that calm in the storm to being able to operate while the shiz hits the fan. So in an SHTF situation, if you're the calm one, then you know, you're know you able to carry on through while everybody's losing their wits. So with that in security, we have what we call IRP, um, incident response plans. So you have to have specific response plans for certain flags. I'll zoom it all the way back out to fire safety, stop, drop, and roll. That's people, you know, they drilled it in us when we were kids. Um, crawl, walk, run. If it's too smoky, you got to crawl your way out, walk your way out. You're still hawking and calf, coughing, the heat from the flames. Then you run out of there. You get out of that box. You get out of that situation. When the fire people come in there, what's their response plan? Well, they don't want that fire to go to the neighbor's house, do they? So they have to contain that fire. So um, there's basic steps in, in uh, incident response plan. So it's detect. Second one is contain. So if I'm a fireman, I want to somehow either hose it off, hose off the boundary. If it's a big forest fire, they do the fire burn line or fire wall, right? And they're able to contain that fire and prevent it from moving laterally from, uh, from a hacker perspective, moving laterally or escalating privileges to where they would then get a sys admin and get the golden ticket or the keys to the kingdom. Um, so we detect, we contain, the next step is to eradicate. The fireman's gonna put the fire all the way out and hose it down. Uh, so they, they kill that and then the next one is remediation, or what we would say rebuilding, restoring. So if I had a web server that got attacked, somehow it was exposed, we're going to either re-image that system completely, or if we are, are confident enough in what we stopped and it wasn't heavy duty, then we, you know, update as needed. Like if, let's say, if it's um, a vulnerability, close ports um, and, um uninstall or, or get rid of the application. With all the crazy malware and bugs in today's uh, world, um, a lot of the more mature institutions and establishments go ahead and just burn it, just scorched earth, uh, reset that the machine and uh, rebuild it. Because you even have malware that survives rootkit. So even on a manufacturer reset, they're still able to survive. So uh, a lot of times that way you don't want something lurking in the shadows after you thought you killed it, you know, like in the scary movie. Um, the best thing to do is just to um, completely remediate it and hit the control alt delete and, and, and reset that. Um, so with that, uh, we got our hack in the gap. We got the OSI model, CIA triad. Um, and then RIP or IRP, if you're not dyslexic, uh, that's the incident response plan in the playbooks. Going in the cloud is the same thing. So if I have, if I'm a cloud-born company and um, back in the day, you used to have to have a letter of request if you're gonna do a pen test on, on the cloud. So from a um, Hacking and defense point of view, it's it's really opened up to where you just notify the company and you get um, approval from the company. But they always say get written approval. Why is that? Well, um, a lot of times they don't uh, own the IP spaces, or they may give you the wrong IP. A lot of times, a lot of companies don't know what they what they own. They had these Windows XP machines. Some guy that wrote the script 20 years ago. Uh, in COBOL and Fortran, we can't change the script, so we can't update that, but that's making us a, a billion bucks in revenue, so it's got to go. So um, they have eaten the risk or accepted the risk. A lot of times when they're able to do that little rubber stamp of approval, it goes willy-nilly, and going back to the earlier conversation, their perspective on profits uh, has them grow so quickly that they, uh, kind of like a teenager, grow 
uh, out of their bones, so to speak. Um, so they don't maintain that discipline as, as they grow. I'm going to pause for another water break. Any other questions, thoughts? Bye, Simahu. All right, so um, going. I'm on to, mute. Um, um, did you go? Did you catch Free's questions? Where is what she said? What do you say to small businesses who have no security system in place, and how much do you charge? Because I know a few. <laughs> um, I personally do not um, do it just because I don't have the time. Um, and for me, I love learning, so I would rather be playing in my lab um, than um, dealing with that. Uh, with that being said, um, I think 2020 taught us all something is we got to have multiple revenue streams. So this is the gig economy and, um, you know, you got to keep hustling and inflation is going to be kicking your butt. So I'm not knocking anybody for getting certs and, and, and getting paid more. Um, with that being said, uh, I would say still word of mouth is, is good. From pen tests, I'll say it kind of goes with like websites, right? Some companies pay $90,000 for a pen test. Some companies pay, I'd say on average, anywhere from 10 to 30. Um, if you get it less for that, you may get what, you know, you pay for what you get. So um people would run vulnerability scans and call that a pen test and that's not that's not uh the same thing so if you have a rapid seven or a qualis scan that basically just says hey i'm running uh red hat os uh you know 15 or ubuntu i'm still running uh sent os or uh i'll still run ubuntu 15 when we're up to ubuntu 20. um so with that, you're then able to scan the system again and figure out which which vulnerabilities are there. So for a small company, uh, I got one thing that I'm having a bit of a nightmare right now, but it's called the Unified Dream Router. It's a UDR. Um, so it is kind of like a PF Sense. It's a firewall for personal home use or for small business. So for this one, I'd say for like 200, 300 bucks, you're able to have an all-in-one that has um, your, your SIM, your IPS, your IDS, um, and everything integrated. So um, after the playbooks, I'll, I'll get in a cyber kill chain, but I'll, I'll uh, go into the SIM, is um, your security incident and event management um, machine. So the, the SIM, S-I-E-M, is basically all the logs that are generated from each system, each phone application, each user or identity or root account, system account that um, logs in, has applications, has error logs, whatever logs that you want to receive um, to integrate that all into one. And it then picks up what um, it thinks is risky behavior. So Microsoft has its own, um, Azure has Sentinel, which is a SIM, AWS has um, Guard Duty, and um, I forget, CloudTrail. So they, they, they integrate those, and um, there is alert fatigue, which is a real thing. If you've seen the memes of, hey, you know, I'm only one year or two years in the sock and it's got a picture of an old dude, um, that is real. Uh, because think of it this way, you're in a platoon, you have your separate specialist, right? So someone might be a firewall specialist, someone might be an engineer for, for that sim. Um, you have your, your sock people, some people might be better threat hunters, some people would be on the defense side. You have your, your pen testers or the purple teams that blend that, that red and and, and blue team together um, and you're getting attacked daily by bots I think over I forget what the uh, the website traffic is uh, for humans but it's over 50 percent from 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 bots um, write that down write what down 
Sorry, I saw freeze freeze question. Free, you did. You said, what did you want him to write down? What what you were saying um, that a small thing wants to be used. Oh, yeah. Just look up UDR by unit by. Let me see if I can hit send. There we go. So that's like 300 bucks. You plug it in and it's it's got everything uh, in there. Thank you, Free. It's got everything in there. Um, so um, let me do cyber kill chain. Up this. Rico, Rico, can I add to something that you were just talking about with the um, mm -hmm. with uh, with um, when, in regards to uh, cybersecurity and uh, small companies? So um, most of the time, the smaller companies they so let's back up. Let's not say let's not let's just talk about small companies. Small companies in cities don't have a cybersecurity plan. That's why you see in a lot of these cities, people get access to a good prime example is like utility bills, like where you pay your utilities at, they hack the system or they end up hacking the 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 water treatment. That's one. Another one is they hack um, just in general, anything regards to the infrastructure of that city or so forth, because Number one, most cities don't have money. They don't have funding to pay for protection, for the, the proper protection, let's say that, for cybersecurity, or they're underfunded. So uh, you'll get in a situation where you have a, a contract out there to, to, to force for cybersecurity, and it's, it goes out to the person who can do it the cheapest, doesn't necessarily mean they're the best. Got more hoes than Swiss cheese over there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they, yeah. So they, so they end up, they end up having a small company who may, or may not have the experience, or somebody knows somebody, and they just let that person do it uh, because they just know somebody, right? And that person, you hope, brings in the right people, or they know what they're doing. But most people who are in these positions have no clue what you're talking about. And that's the same thing that goes for people that are, um, for people who are, uh, uh, are uh, the small companies, they have no clue what, what you're talking about. You tell them that they got holes, they're like, okay, well, what we got to do to fix it? And they may not fix anything, right? So integrity is, is really huge. And another piece to this is, this is why I push the people always ask me, why do I push sans.org? There's a reason for that. Um, the reason why I push sans.org is because a lot of those people who come out with their uh, certifications start forming their own company to do just that, pen testing or uh, perimeter security or cloud security or whatever the case may be. And so I, I give you a, an example. I had to do, I had to, I had to um, find some pen testers to do some some work for uh, OctoML. And for me, it's me doing the research on one the person, word of mouth. What, what do they have any books published? Is that what, what do they do? Because what you find is a lot of the bigger companies, like I'll give you a prime example, no, uh, no before. They don't want to do pen testing. They don't want that. They don't want to be bothered with that. For them, it's not, it's no money for them. The money is in the products, the services, and the subscriptions to keep you coming back. Pen testing for them is like a one-off. So what they'll do is they'll find people who come out of Sandstar or, or IC squared or something like that. And they may be friends with them, like their CISO may be friends with them, or they know their work in the industry and they'll just have a contract set up with a pen tester who may have a company, who should have a company. And then that work gets farmed to that person. So 
Uh, when it comes down to pen testing, I've seen uh, pen testing go from anywhere for a hundred machines for ten thousand dollars to a uh, hundred thousand dollars. Now, mm -hmm. here's the here's the good part about about it. Um, you could the the way it was working with me is I knew pen testers and I knew people that needed pen testing done. So I set up contract agreements with the people who do the pen testing and the people who need the work done. And so I get part of the contract, right? So I get any, anytime there's some work found, say I find some work and the work is a hundred thousand dollars. Somebody's going to cut me a check for 10%. If the if that company over there like, hey, we like their work, we want to get them hired on, we want to contract with them, I'm gonna get a cut of that, right? So what what I all I'm simply saying is this: it's a business model that you can follow, but it's also if you want to do pen testing, make sure you start putting yourself in a position where people um, know your work on to. Um, make a name for yourself put your, by putting your name out there you know those short quick blobs you know little blurbs you don't have to write whole essays you don't have to do you know the big time demos you know i think now looking at it i think they said the average person looks at content for five seconds and you know that that's due to the shorts that's why the shorts came out and TikTok. so Again, generating, if you, this is something that you want to do, this is just a generation of that. Just throwing that out there. And, and most people were, uh, most people, um, most people who are pen testers, they're pretty hidden. They don't, they don't want you to know, but pen testing and security hacking comes in all forms. We had, uh, which I got to get him back on the show. I think his last name was, his first name was, I think his first name is uh, Chris. Uh, Baca, but I got to look him up in my phone and have him back on the show. The one that was hacking your your home routers from two miles away using his satellite. I don't know if, if y'all were on the call for that one. Well, how y'all doing anyway? Thank you, Rico, for filling I didn't in. See that one, that... Oh, yeah, no, no, no. He worries. didn't fill in, he took over. <laughs> this was his moment. This is his time. You did not fill in. This was your moment in time, Rico. We appreciate it. Well, for my notes, <laughs> the only the only thing that that uh, I, I 